Hey everyone, we're going to be talking about needle stick injuries. So needle stick injuries are not uncommon. They happen very so often in the health workplace. We should be careful about handling the sharps whenever we do and we should know what to do before, during and after the needle stick injury. So first of all, it's very important to be careful before the needle stick injury happens and do everything to prevent the needle stick injury from happening. As I said, prevention is the best cure. So if you can prevent it, you can you know, avoid it. However, uh, to prevent it, you should know that double gloving, careful handling of the shafts, taking it nice and slow, all these things are very, very important. However, sometimes these things can't be avoided. We can't avoid a needle stick injury. It's the nature of the job. Um, but it is not something that we should be fearful about and something that we can definitely take care of, okay? So needle stick injury is also important to know in terms of the viruses and the infection that you or the other person may have. For example, hepatitis B, hepatitis C and HIV are the three trial that we are worried about and something that has a different risk of transmission. So for example, I remember this by rules of three. For hepatitis B, the risk of transmission is 30%. For hepatitis C, it's 3%. And for HIV, it's 0.3%. So even if you have um, needle stick injury, um, you know, not every disease will have the same risk of transmission. So hepatitis B fortunately is treatable. You do have antiviral medications for hepatitis B, but hepatitis C and HIV is still nasty if you have one, okay? But in any case, the idea here is what to do if you have a needle stick injury. So let's have a look. Now, immediately after the injury, you should wash the hand with soap and water. Put your hand under soap or water for at least five to 10 minutes. Now, if soap and water are not available, you should use alcohol-based drops, okay? And if you're at work, always, always notify your supervisor, fill out a needle stick incident form, which is now a mandatory condition in most of the hospitals. Go straight to your doctor or to the nearest hospital emergency department, okay? Now, if you are at the doctor's surgery or the emergency department, take detailed information about the injury, including how long it happened, how deeply the skin was penetrated, whether or not the needle was visible, contaminated with blood, and if any first aid measures were done. Well, we should explain to the patient as a doctor that the risk of transmission is small. We should offer blood tests to check for HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C. Inform the user always offer a psychosocial support in this case as it is often needed and always consent from the patient and both the parties for testing about HIV, hepatitis B and hepatitis C and should advise about reducing the risk of transmission until the test results are received. You should practice safe sex and avoid donating blood. Okay, so this is some of the um, things that as a doctor and in the surgery you should be telling your patients. Now, what after? Now, after the needle stink, we uh, do something called as a post-exposure prophylaxis, okay? Where, now, wherever the testing of the source of the exposure is possible, the test should be done, okay? Whether there has been, we should try to find out whether there has been exposure to blood from that source, whether uh, where the exposure source is unknown or can't be tested, an assessment of the situation may suggest an increased risk, for example, a needle discarded from a drug treatment facility. Okay, now, as I said, prevention is better than cure. So there are multiple ways we can reduce the risk in a healthcare environment. First, healthcare workers who make contact into blood or body fluids should receive proper vaccinations. Hepatitis B vaccinations are available everywhere and all the healthcare workers should have this vaccination, should have their levels tested. They should regularly untake, uh, undertake safety refresher courses and sharp handling courses. You should strictly and carefully follow all the safety procedures in the workplace. Minimize your use of needles. Now remember that latex gloves 
do not protect you against needle stick injuries. Don't bend or snap used needles. Never recap a used needle. Place the used needles carefully into a clearly labeled and puncture proof, sharps approved container. I hope you liked this video. Keep coming back for more and do share, like, subscribe and comment.